Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have made that joke. That's such a healthy mom joke. Very, very good point. David Ricardo is the Scottish philosopher who in the 1800s came up with the theory of free trade, which the theory part didn't work then and doesn't work now. And so when people talk about free trade, they always say, you know, screw up with David Ricardo. Smith would be the other one whose name might get thrown around. But it's I know Adam Smith. Okay. Yeah, M. Smith was the invisible you know, hand, and the Ricardo took one step further and did comparative. A lot of going back to Adam Smith, uh, in his defense, he recognized something that is highly pertinent today. He recognized what would happen, to, he, he discussed what would happen to Britain, it's his topic of course, what would happen to Britain if it adhered to the rules of sound economics. So suppose he thought what's now called neoliberalism. Uh, so suppose he said that the the merchants and manufacturers in England uh, decided that they could make more profit if they invested abroad, produced abroad, uh, and imported from abroad. And he concluded that they would profit, but England would suffer. Uh, in case that sounds familiar, it is. They would profit, England would suffer. But he said he didn't think this was going to happen uh, because they would be guided by uh, what's sometimes called home bias. Uh, just a commitment to your own country. Uh, so therefore, he said, as if by an invisible hand, uh, England will be saved from the, the ravages of uh, uh, markets, global market systems, global neoliberalism, in today's words. Uh, that's a passage in Wealth of Nations, his famous book, that's pretty hard to miss. In fact, it's the only occurrence of the phrase, famous phrase, invisible hand, in Wealth of Nations in what amounts to a critique of what we call uh, global neoliberalism. Uh, his, uh, the second major uh, figure in classical economics, David Ricardo, uh, had the same perception, in fact. He said he, would, he hoped that uh, home bias would lead men of property to be satisfied, I'm quoting him, to be satisfied with the low rate of profit in their own country, rather than to seek a more advantageous employment for their wealth in foreign nations. And he said that these are feelings that uh, I should be sorry to see weakened. He recognized if they were weakened, England would suffer, though it's uh, the masters of England would, would uh, uh, gain. And the instincts of the classical economists were sound uh, in the United States, and not here alone, we're essentially living in a nightmare that they predicted, uh, producing offshore, very profitable for the, say, you know, the owners of Apple and Dell and many others, uh, very harmful to the uh, uh, American population. All of the Middle East, North Africa, MENA region sometimes called, uh, in both the United States and the MENA region, uh, the up, the uh, uprisings are a, a reaction to a vigorous assault against the population that's been going on for 30 years uh, worldwide. Uh, it's under the neoliberal banner, uh, sometimes called the Washington Consensus, uh, sometimes it's called the IMF, World Bank, World Trade Organization, Unholy Trinity. Uh, sometimes called the World Bank IMF Treasury Complex, all approximately the same thing. Uh, in the United States, the first major popular reaction to this era of uh, what should be called the uh, vicious class war, first major reaction is the Occupy movement uh, that began in New York and have now spread uh, to much of the country. Uh, inspired by the dramatic developments in uh, Egypt and other parts of uh, MENA. Federal Reserve Chair Alan Greenspan, uh, who was known as St. Alan during his glory days, uh, he was hailed as one of the greatest economists of all time as he presided over what was claimed to be a miraculous economy in which all fundamental problems had been resolved thanks to the triumph of the market. 
and also, as he proudly explained to Congress, uh, thanks to what he called growing worker insecurity, which reduces pressures for compensation and decent working conditions, which are plainly worthy, worthy features of a decent uh, ec economy and society. Uh, meanwhile, wealth concentrated in the pockets of a small fraction of 1% of the population, a section so small that the census doesn't even pick it up. You have to detail a sophisticated uh, statistical analysis to identify them, roughly a tenth of a percent of the population. It accounts for a substantial part of the enormous inequality in the United States. Uh, and uh, while well, that was happening for the majority for the past generation, uh, real incomes have largely stagnated, uh, uh, declined. Uh, for African Americans, uh, wealth is now practically zero after the collapse of the housing bubble. Uh, people have tried to get by through increased uh, working hours uh, by now well beyond other industrial countries uh, by debt, which is of course unsustainable, and by uh, asset inflation, uh, it's temporary paper wealth that uh, disappears with the collapse of the bubbles. This has been a regular feature of the economy ever since the early Reagan years through the neoliberal years as the uh, New Deal uh, regulatory apparatus uh, collapsed under bipartisan assault. There were no financial crises until the early 80s uh, after the Second World War. Uh, the, uh, and the economy uh, uh, shifted dramatically from the 1970s uh, to uh, financialization and uh, offshoring of production. 